All right, well, thanks, everybody. I just um, I wanted to take uh, the occasion today uh, after uh, school was let out for, uh, for the summer for at least the students, but not so much the administration uh, officials who are here in attendance. They, uh, I said today's also a reminder that they, they don't exactly get a summer vacation like, uh, like, like others. Uh, but really, today's an occasion to take stock of uh, how far things have come in the school department. Um, the, uh, in a recent school committee meeting, we talked about a community survey that the school department sent out and had a very high response uh, rate to it. That was something that uh, Jonathan Cavarlo, the uh, district uh, community relations officer, um, uh, orchestrated. But there were uh, some some 3,124 responses to uh, to the community survey that asked um, a, a bevy of questions about um, the performance of the school district. And it was sent out not only to uh, faculty uh, and administration and, uh, and as well as business people, but also to families, most importantly. And um, it's the family part that I want to talk about today because we have a city that has long demanded more out of its school system. A uh, city that where people have, parents and others who've had a stake in the school system have recognized that uh, we can't progress as a community if we don't have a high performing school district. And it almost goes without saying these days that if we don't have kids who have uh, basic skills, uh, skills that allow them to move on to college and career readiness, and we're not going to have a competitive city in the global economy. And uh, if you ask any major employer in the city what uh, these days, they'll tell you that they're hiring up, uh, but that they can't find folks who, are, um, who have the skill sets to uh, qualify for the positions they're applying for that are open. Um, not in every instance, but in many instances. There are, there are opportunities that are going unfulfilled. And it's our job, uh, in part, to make sure that uh, we give uh, students, as soon as they get to us, pre-K, uh, the tools they need to um, develop into lifelong learners, to, uh, into critical thinking adults who communicate well and have a broad view of the world. Um, and for too long in this city, um, problems, uh, the problems in our school district, which were very profound and broad, uh, were ignored. Uh, there were problems that stretch from uh, classroom practice to family engagement to um, central office operations that were just were done just because they had been done for so long and there had been a focus instead uh, instead of on the students in the school district and their needs uh, on the adults and uh, when I got into office some three and a half years ago um, it was my firm belief and I had said this in my original campaign that uh, we needed to change and uh, we needed to change soon and I think it came as a surprise to some folks who are just all too used to hearing rhetoric about the school system that I meant it. Um, we didn't need to change, we needed to, to do it um, uh, promptly and though we didn't need uh, any more urging, it, it, there was a, a crisis at the time when uh, then right, and still uh, DESC Commissioner Mitchell Chester wrote the district that change uh, needed to happen uh, promptly and dramatically. I'm paraphrasing, but he did use the word dramatically. And uh, it was, he had sent a letter in on, uh, to the district concerning the district's most recent uh, quarterly report that showed that the district was not only not progressing, but it was backsliding. And so we took dramatic steps uh, in 2000. 12 uh, to set in motion uh, the changes that have been taking place. And so under the, the leadership of uh, first of Michael Shea and then, and then uh, in, in the last uh, two years, uh, Dr. Pia Durkin, uh, we have been able to, to move the ball down the field. We have, uh, we're, and I've, I've gone through a litany of these items. I think it bears, it bears, some, uh, it bears some repeating that beginning with the central office itself, things have totally revamped in the way that we manage money, 
and the way that uh, personnel are tracked and, and recruited and uh, retained and promoted uh, in the way uh, that we evaluate uh, performance. When uh, I'd gotten into office, there were some, uh, there had only been uh, a handful of principals who had been evaluated in the previous two years. No organization, much less one of some 2,000 employees, could uh, conceivably operate well without giving its middle managers and senior managers the opportunity for professional feedback and also to determine who's performing well and who's not to make promotion uh, or attrition decisions. None of that stuff was happening. Basic management uh, of the school department wasn't happening and it affected the classroom so much so that New Bedford really did hit close to rock bottom in the state uh, uh, on along most metrics, along uh, attendance and graduation rates and of course uh, MCAS scores in both ELA and math. And so the, the, uh, so the changes ha have been made. They've been made by bringing in, by recruiting talent uh, from elsewhere as well as developing existing talent well in the system, all geared toward a view, as Dr. Durkin has, has articulated time and time again and reinforced, uh, with a view toward the, the interest of children, first and foremost. Uh, it is about it is about them, and that is a, that is what the public school system in New Bedford is all about these days. Now we've said time and time again also that this is not an overnight exercise. We have a large school district that um, uh, fell into into its struggles over the course of many years. It didn't happen immediately, and turning it around wouldn't happen immediately. Uh, but it is, and that. Uh, the usual measures of success would take a little bit of time to appear. MCAS scores and other markers on the scoreboard would, uh, would appear over time, but not immediately. And so I'm here today to note that we're starting to see the differences. Uh, we're starting to see, as we've discussed before, that some, uh, now some 70% of our entering freshmen at, at New Bedford High School uh, graduate in four years. Uh, that's up from roughly 55 percent some four years ago. That is a dramatic increase. That is a dramatic increase that is a tribute to Dr. Durkin's hard work, the administration's hard work uh, generally, as well as the hard work of teachers in this building. It, it really has made a difference. Um, when we talk about uh, uh, dibbles and other, um, and other um, uh, uh, test scores that are uh, provided um, over the course of the year uh, and, and tracked closely, uh, we're making progress across, uh, across all levels. And we are making uh, progress uh, in things like advanced placement uh, uh, testing and, and uh, matriculate, excuse me, uh, enrollment. So we now have more students at the high school uh, than ever before taking advanced placement classes because we know that that is, a, it's always been a strength of this high school and must be made stronger still if we are in the long run to retain a middle class in the city as well as to make sure that our uh, that our highest achieving students have an opportunity to, to be launched regardless of their backgrounds. So that is very important. We're here today to, to note um, also the results of the study which was which had a very high response rate because in part because it was distributed very thoroughly to, uh, to, to parents uh, through the school system, through the classroom, through the classroom teachers, uh, so that we could really get really uh, great feedback. Some uh, 2,500 families responded to this survey, uh, a very large sample size. And um, I'm proud to say that some 72% of the families responding uh, stated that I'll just get the exact verbiage, Dr. Durkin. Um, uh, they were asked, uh, how much do you think the New Bedford public schools are improving? And they were asked in, to, to rate them in, in, in uh, order of, uh, according to intensity of approval or disapproval, and approving uh, the idea of that the school system is improving for some 72% of family members. That is. Uh, for a school district that has gone through what we have gone through, that is quite remarkable. Uh, it's a reflection of the hard work that Dr. Durkin has put in and the, the course that she has set. It is a reflection of the responsiveness 
of our schools and of the central administration to the needs of parents, and it's a and it's a testament also to uh, the hard work of teachers uh, in our system who are grinding it out every single day. Uh, we've asked a lot of teachers, and we uh, uh, over the course of the year, and they are they are putting they're laying it all on the line. They're laying it all all on the line for their their students because they believe in our students. They believe in the mission of the school system, and so. Um, it is, uh, this is a, a time uh, to mark really the progress of the school system and, and point a way forward for the years to come where uh, these, these changes and additional ones uh, in areas involving ELL and special ed and again uh, advanced placement and, and other programs are only going to build and accelerate the change. And, uh, and so we we're very proud. Uh, that we've made it this far. There's an awful long way to go, I will tell you, and I know Dr. Dirk would be the first one to tell you there's an awful long way to go, but uh, today is a, uh, a time not only to remind us of how far we've come, but also uh, to step back and say, you know what, it's, it's starting to work. So with all that, let me, uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Dirk, and we unfortunately couldn't get any other school committee members uh, to come today just because of uh, it so happened that they all had other commitments and, and couldn't be here today. Uh, but let me, and, and they wish they could, but let me, let me call up uh, Dr. Durkin just to say a few words about the survey and the results and uh, where things have come from and, and where they're going. Dr. Durkin. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. Essentially, this is really a team effort, as the mayor captured so well. Um, it is about teachers every day making a difference in children's lives and principals leading teachers in that effort and giving them the support and the reality of how we're going to get there. The fact that 72% of our families are seeing that work with a sense of hope and believing that we are improving is incredibly important as we go forward. We have a long way to go, as the mayor stated, but this is a validation of the work that we've done thus far. The fact that last year, 30% stated that the schools were improving, and we have since doubled that, including staff members, to 60%, with 72% of that 60% being families, who are our greatest customers. So with that, I say that we move on. We will continue to have the barometer of assessing our work with our most important customers, which are our parents and our children. And we will be having a full report on the survey, including student information data, later in the summer that we'll be making public and enjoying to look at what we're doing well and what we need to improve. This is a continuous work in progress as we build an excellent school system that will become one of the best in the Commonwealth. All right, thank you, Dr. Dirk. And that leads, I'll open it up to questions, Carol or Greg. Ladies first, no. Uh, Dr. Durkin, uh, was there 3% favorability of resources in the schools from uh, staff and faculty? So what's going to be addressed in the next coming years to fix that? Um, when asked staff members of do they believe in the rigorous expectations that have been set, over 80% stated such. They also believed in the culture and climate improving. Of course, that'll be broken down by school. But one of the most challenging pieces of data is when asked if they have enough resources and tools to do the work that they're set to work, um, less than 40% of our, our faculty stated that. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Um, we'll begin that work um, with the city in terms of understanding the needs and investing here of the things that need to get done. But nothing is going to stop us from creating an excellent school system and the resources and reform that's needed to make it happen. Yeah, let me just add, I mean, we're all familiar with the challenge of resources in the, in the district. And um, you know, we have, in the last three and a half years, put substantially more resources into the school system. And we're committed to, uh, to, to stretching as far as we can to make, uh, make that, that happen. You know, we're looking, if you looked at yesterday's paper, you would have noticed, or even I think today's paper, today's paper, in fact, uh, um, you know, Brockton is laying off 130 school employees, 135 school employees, and uh, Fall River is, is looking at layoffs in its school department. So, you know, we need to make sure that uh, you know, we maintain a steady course financially uh, so that we can continually invest on a steady pace in the school department. Like, we'd certainly love to be able to pour more money 
into it, but we have to be prudent as we've discussed before. And in the years ahead, we believe that we're going to be able to make some real commitments to accelerate the change. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for all the hard work. Thank you. Thank you.